speaker. Hi, Melton. How are you doing? Thank you, Pauline. I'm very fine. And you? <laughs> I am great. I'm in great company, so I feel great. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. So we're still waiting for our other speakers to arrive. Uh, so let's speak to Melchim for a bit. Melchim, how have you been enjoying the event so far? Yes, yes. Uh, congratulations, you know. Uh, even though we, uh, you couldn't make it in Dubai, it's nice to be here with friends and, uh, you know, all my uh, uh, friends from all uh, parts of the world. And I hope uh, we'll be meeting soon uh, live as we did before. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I think the world is just aching to meet each other and meet each other physically. But like I said, even when we meet each other, the standard greeting should be, Melton, we should do it together. Namaste. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. have an internationally accepted greeting now. But how yeah. was the networking session for you? Were you able to talk to some interesting people? Well, actually, I couldn't attend the networking because, you know, we are extremely busy, which is the good news for us. Yes. <laughs> uh, we have a lot of weddings here in Turkey uh, because it's the last month, September, that we can do outdoor weddings. Uh, therefore, I have a very big wedding uh, tomorrow and I have another wedding the other day. So uh, I'm happy to be very busy, uh, but I'm also very happy to be here, at least attending this session. Uh, talking about the news uh, after COVID-19. Yes, of course. We also have a lot of questions for you. I mean, this panel discussion is about getting a bit uh, from the stalwarts of the industry who've been there, especially during the pandemic, how things have changed for everybody in the industry. In, in fact, I wanted to ask you uh, that what are the changes in the conceptualization of design for weddings? How has it changed over the past two years? Yes, well, it's been a great change, I should say. Uh, now we have different facts and uh, different lives than we used to have, everybody has. Uh, but it was, uh, you know, we had to be more creative. At least we had to be uh, creative in different points now. Uh, you know, when this uh, COVID-19 started, uh, actually, I should be honest, uh, I didn't think it would last for years, you know. Uh, I thought it can, it will be over in three or four, at, you know, uh, maybe in six months, then we'll go back to our work. That's the way I was thinking and most of my friends were thinking. But then we realized uh, the truth that uh, it's going to be long. Uh, and we had to keep our companies uh, standing and we had to uh, keep ourselves standing because, you know, this is my 26th year in the business. Uh, and my 26 years have passed, uh, you know, like a, a marathon runner, you know, I was running, I had a busy life and suddenly I found myself just, you know, delaying and postponing the uh, events and weddings and I was, a, uh, you know, I was sitting at home. So uh, I started to do uh, some uh, live uh, you know, sessions in Instagram uh, with all my friends uh, doing this business from all around the world. I did live sessions with Colin Covey, with Sir, uh, Sarah Haywood, and with, you know, uh, Bob Nash, uh, which he will be, I think, attending this session as well. And, uh, you know, many, many friends from Pakistan, India, States. And I was asking, you know, what do you think, how uh, it's going to be, you know, because nobody knew the answer. And uh, everybody was like me, except Colin Covey, I should say. Uh, he said, <laughs> what we are living now? He said, well, everything will go back, uh, you know, will turn to be the same um, in three or four years. So everything will be back slowly by slowly. So we have to be patient. So I, I, I thought, you know, Colin is not so positive as a personality, but he was right. You know, he was, everybody was expecting to be, uh, uh, you know, uh, to start the events much earlier. Well, then I, uh, I started to postpone the events uh, and uh, then I started to make small, small uh, weddings that had to be done, you know, uh, with openings, closings and uh, openings of the countries, you know, 
Uh, however, of course, last year was a, a very, very difficult year. This year is a much better year than last year. At least we are busy <laughs> this summer, uh, which I'm happy. Well, what changed in the design? Of course, uh, uh, as a wedding designer, I started to realize the, uh, I have to follow many new rules, new regulations, and uh, we have new normals now. So, uh, I, and I have to follow these rules and regulations because they are changing accordingly to the uh, increasing number of uh, and decreasing number of cases. So, uh, for instance, uh, I'm designing a wedding for uh, a destination, uh, Oman, uh, nowadays. So while designing the event, I have to uh, know the rules and regulations uh, about the social distance and about the you know, timing, because every country doesn't have the same timing for the weddings. So uh, I learned to follow the regulations, because before, almost all the regulations were almost the same for every country. Uh, so this was, uh, you know, the first thing I had to change while designing because I had to be very careful about the, uh, about the, uh, you know, uh, rules and regulations. The second thing is, of course, the number of the guests have decreased immensely. Uh, now we have a lot of spaces in the uh, wedding area, wedding venue, you know, because, you know, for instance, if a venue has, uh, can host 500 guests, uh, I can only do a wedding there uh, for 200 guests, you see, because of the social distance. So I have a lot of, a lot of uh, empty spaces uh, to fill with creative ideas in the wedding venue. So I started to design my wedding, uh, my weddings with creative and very, uh, you know, uh, impressive corners, like a very impressive a tasting corner, a very impressive memory corner, a very impressive, you know, I had to be creative in different points now because I had to fill the space. Again, the uh, timing uh, is shifted. For instance, uh, we had to do a lot of after parties uh, after the wedding reception. Now, for instance, in Turkey, after parties are not allowed anymore. So we shifted the timing of the weddings. The weddings used to start at 7, 7.30 in Turkey. Now they are starting at 5 or 6 p.m. Uh, because, you know, it has to end at 12 o'clock. So, uh, therefore, I'm uh, using more creativity at the cocktail area uh, as well as the reception. Before, the reception was very important, the most important place. But the cocktail area is as important as the reception area because people want to spend their time uh, more uh, in the cocktail as they miss socializing with each other. Uh, the other thing that uh, changed in the conceptualization, of course, the understanding of the understanding of the couples and the families. Uh, you know, uh, they, uh, they came into such a level that they don't want to harm the environment. They don't, they want to protect the planet. Uh, so uh, they don't want to spend their budget for thousands of uh, flowers for a wedding. So they asked me to be more creative uh, in the table decor and the wedding venue decor with less flowers and sometimes with no flowers. Uh, so this is, uh, uh, I think this is uh, another point that has changed uh, in, uh, designing, uh, in designing a wedding. So you know, uh, we are more conscious about our planet now. Uh, at least in Turkey, they are asking me to do this. And also, uh, we found some new venues uh, for small weddings, uh, which was a good idea, uh, because I used to work with big, big venues before for a big amount of people. And now I'm uh, also using very, and I also found uh, beautiful small venues for small uh, groups of uh, guests. So these have changed the, uh, these, these changed, you know. So for a wedding designer, what has changed as a summary, uh, we are more careful about uh, rules and regulations, uh, and we are taking care more uh, social distance, uh, and uh, we have to be uh, following 
the changes uh, in the regulations and we are more careful about our planets now and uh, this is all uh, uh, changed uh, and also another thing I have to add we have to be flexible because you know with the changing rules uh, for instance if you are designing a wedding for 500 guests you have to take into consideration that it may drop to uh, 200 guest wedding in one night because of the changing regulations. So I learned to be more flexible uh, while designing a wedding. So this changed in conceptualization in the weddings with COVID-19. Great, thank you so much, Meltem, for that insight into the changes. I think everybody's dealing with these changes. And we also have Mr. Robert Char, who have just joined us, and I would like to ask him the same question. But before that, I would like to introduce him. Mr. Robert Char, floral designer and founder of Casa del Flora, one of the leading Lebanese floral designers with more than 16 years of experience in the wedding industry. He had the honor of designing the flowers and creating beautiful spaces for the royal families in Abu Dhabi, Dubai, Qatar, and for a lot of international clientele in Europe, Africa, and the Middle East. The core philosophy behind his floral designs is to take his clients on a natural journey through each customized centerpiece, which is based on the client's preference and allows one to create a beautiful space engaging their mind and sense. Mr. Robert Char, welcome. Welcome to our discussion and welcome to the event. Hello, dear. Uh, thank you. And thank you for this uh, introduction. Uh, we really miss these meetings and all uh, like happy, uh, happy meetings uh, together in this wedding industry, really. So thank you so much. I'm so happy to be there. Thank you so much. We are so happy to have you with us. And let's start off by, with the same question that I asked Melton a while ago, a very important and pertinent question to the ongoing situation, that what are the changes in conceptualization of design for weddings that you have encountered in the recent past? Okay. Uh, for us, during for our, our job, what we, what we do usually, we have two markets. We have like Lebanese market where we do usually uh, wedding and floral design. Also, we have GCC weddings. GCC wedding is something completely different than Lebanese wedding. Where we, what we do in Lebanese wedding. So in Lebanon, what what change is only the num the number of guests. And as as my friend uh, said previously, uh, the precautions, uh, uh, the precautions and the social distancing. So in Lebanon, the social distancing and precautions. Uh, limited us with the decoration because now there is a number, a little number of guests. And in Lebanon, when you make a, a little number of guests, you cannot make big decoration and big weddings and big structures like, like we used to, de, to do before. So uh, normally the, the budget is reduced uh, as, as you cannot uh, like uh, give the same price of uh, when you do a wedding for 500 or 700 guests. The same like you do wedding for uh, 80 person or the 100 person and most of the people are afraid or the guests are afraid to come to a, to the wedding due to uh, to covid situation now with the, everybody is going uh, with vaccination and and more precaution so the number are uh, going up step by step this is for uh, for lebanon market but for uh, gcc or especially now in qatar market uh, things is, is different we, we and for us also we do only big weddings or big events so big events not only means with number of guests it means with the decoration the expectation of the of the guests of, or I like to call them guests not uh, or couples not clients uh, their expectation is more uh, with the decoration like what we are doing now we have we have same big big spaces the same like ballroom, indoor or outdoor uh, tent, big tent. Uh, we are putting like many tables because it's allowed like to put like f five guests on each table. So if you have like 100 guests, you will have the same amount of table or a little bit less than we used uh, before because the, there is less, before we put like 10 guests on each table, 10 or 12 guests on each table. Now we are putting five. So the number of table, we, we put more and we are uh, like managing it with the floor plan to have like some lounges. We have some uh, 
some more tab different shape of tables, big tables with less guests on it. So when you put more tables, the decoration will be more impressing. Because when you put like five tables, it's, you'll, you'll have five centerpieces. But you, when, you, when you put 30 tables, you will have 30 centerpieces. So all will be more impressive, more impressive with the quantity. And our client, uh, even uh, uh, not so much uh, number of weddings uh, this year, the last year due to COVID, but the weddings that we did, all was uh, almost the same, little bit less, uh, with only the difference is with number of guests and little bit reduced with the budget due to, due to COVID. This is only what changed, but the decoration, usually we do ceiling decoration with flowers. I'm talking about flowers. So entrance decoration, even if we have 10 guests, we should make an entrance decoration. Even if we have 10 guests, we should make a ceiling decoration and the centerpiece decoration. So this is normally for us. We, we have to make the decoration. They are reducing, like we, we are very specialized in landscaping, floral art or arch architecture that we make in every wedding. This is, is a little bit reduced. But the concept is still uh, almost the same. I think this, this is what, what I think. Great. Thank you so much, Robert, for that insight. That was answered really quite well. Thank you for joining us. OK, the next question uh, we, we have for both of you. But first, I would like to ask Melton. So how do you? Uh, could you please comment on the art of understanding client ex expectations to include the magic of personalization? How do you balance that? Yes. Well, actually, uh, being a successful wedding designer starts by understanding uh, the expectations of the customer. What do they want? However, <laughs> some people, uh, you know, our business is also about a lot of about psychology because uh, I found out in the early years of my business that some people are not able to express their feelings. They are not able to express what they want. Even some people don't know what they want. Uh, so these are the hardest. This is the hardest part of uh, this business because you have to understand to be successful. So I, uh, you know, developed a kind of a test, let's say, uh, for my customers uh, in time. Uh, this was a uh, this was a kind of a surfing uh, in my work uh, with the customers. So when they visit uh, my office, I show them like every designer does my work. You know, the pictures, the videos, what I have ever done. Of course, the selective ones. Uh, but I always showed the different models, you know, a modern uh, look, a classical look, a technical look, you know, you know, whites, greens, uh, pinks, violets, and, you know, and I always ask them to be very honest with me, what they like in these pictures and why, what they do not like. Uh, in order to understand them, I have to also learn what uh, what do they do not like so the, this was kind of a test like 45 minutes and it was easy for me by time to understand their taste uh, in our second meeting i uh, i call it a pre-mood board it's not the mood board of a meeting a me, a wedding it's a pre-mood board it's called you know in order to uh, design a, a real wedding i have to understand if myself if i have understood the customer or not so uh, i tell them this is a pre-mood board i uh, worked for you to understand if i have uh, got you you know if i have understood you uh, so it's about like 30 slides something like that and they uh, you know uh, as we go on the slides it's very easy to understand uh, the taste, you know, I'm very sure after the second uh, meeting uh, with the pre mood board, then I start, of course, designing. Uh, but uh, the key point I always I'm also teaching in the Bosphorus University certificate program uh, about uh, event and wedding designing. And I always tell to my students, first, you have to understand the customer. What do they like? what they do not like, because everybody's preferences are really very different. Everybody's expectations are very different. And besides, we have to be very, uh, you know, 
uh, we have to be uh, researching everything, every detail. For instance, uh, I'm also uh, designing the weddings of different couples from different countries, like from India, from Pakistan, from Russia, from Kazakhstan, uh, from Ukraine, from Iran, Europe. And each country has a different tradition, each country has a different uh, expectation, each tradition has a different expectation. Uh, so I have to be, uh, I have made, a, I, I should have made a research before they visit my uh, office uh, about their traditions, their countries. Uh, in order to understand uh, them well. This is the key point, you know, how we can understand. Uh, this is my way of understanding the, my customers, let's say. Thank you so much, Melton, for that answer. Very well said indeed. I think that's very, that's good information that everybody could use. The next question is for you, Robert. If you could navigate us through the challenges of logistics to put together an ex exquisite wedding decor. Excuse me, I didn't hear you. Okay, I'll repeat the question. If you could navigate us through the challenges of logistics when you're designing an exquisite wedding decor, what are the, what are the problems, the logistic issues that you face? Okay. Uh, about logistics, you know, when you when we work with flowers, you are working with something alive. The flowers has like uh, not expiry date, but it will. If you have to understand how to to, to treat the flower, how to take care of it. Uh, since the first the first day, uh, when we make the design for floral decoration, we have to understand where where the location will be. What is the temperature? We calculate also for the temperature of the location, uh, the kind of flowers or choice of flowers that we are using. Because if every uh, kind of flower needs a special uh, way of uh, treatment, as we as we say, so there is some flowers we imported usually like before many many days. Some uh, some flowers we needed uh, like before one or two days to stay fresh and to have the same look that we need uh, to give it to the to the client. So our our uh, work starts with uh, as logistic starts from choosing the kind of flowers, then importing the flowers, or making the design after making the design to know what kind of flowers we are using. Because like when we are using an outdoor uh, wedding, the kind of flowers that we can use and at what time we should uh, install the centerpieces or the flowers, it's different, completely different than an indoor uh, ballroom. Because in indoor ballroom, you have the air condition, you have the fixed temperature, so you can start very, very early with the decoration. Uh, outdoor is completely different. An outdoor venue, when the temperature is high, especially during summer, with, where it is the high season uh, for the wedding, you cannot start installing the flowers before 3 or 4 p.m. So you have sh very short uh, time of, uh, of work. Uh, you have to think very well of uh, what kind of flowers you are, you are using and how you are using it. So many different designs and it's different uh, also because we have, uh, we do destination weddings. We don't do only weddings in Lebanon. We do weddings in Europe, and uh, GCC in Lebanon. So every count and even in Europe, like uh, when you do a wedding in, uh, in Marbella in Spain, it's different than you, you do a wedding in Turkey as my friend knows very well or when you do it in Lebanon or when you do it in GCC you have temperature of 55 degree so it's very hard and, uh, and flowers need uh, like you are taking it directly outside of uh, cooling rooms or cooling truck and you are shipping it before a few days so it's very sensitive how to work with flowers and also uh, we train very well our florist and our designers and our helpers how to transport the arrangement from an area to a different area, like from a uh, Sometimes we prepare the arrangements in advance because when you have like 1,000 guests, you cannot do same day all the arrangements. So you have to prepare it before one or two day or two or three days. So a lot of technique and preparation uh, before getting the final result. So this is usually uh, the matter of temperature or changing the climate between one area and another area. This is the main issue that we face usually. But with our experience uh, so far, there is no problem. We know how to take care. Always we add like 
10 or 15 percent of now of uh, the quantity of flowers that we need to use in, in a wedding to be on the safe side because as you know in in weddings there is no other chance it's one day it goes very fast you have to be uh, uh, to have man manage everything uh, in advance very well and to have zero risk this is the main uh, the main thing that we have to ca take care about it always. You don't have another chance. So it's one day and it goes very fast. So this is it. Great, thank you so much, Robert, for that very informative mm -hmm. answer. I think a lot of us are not aware of the integrities of arrangements when it comes to flowers. Thank you for that. Thank you. The next question is for Meltem. Uh, Meltem, um, I wanted to know how was your personal experience with micro weddings, if you have conducted any in the past year? Meltem, you're on a mute. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah. Last year, especially, uh, I had a lot of uh, 20, 30, 40 guest weddings, I should say. But as uh, my friend uh, Robert said, uh, you know, uh, nothing has changed. I, I have to do the ceremony area decoration. I have to do the entrance area decoration. I have to do the ceiling decoration, even though we have... Uh, Less, less tables, less number of tables, but uh, the decoration doesn't change. So, uh, but however, I had to find uh, for most of my couples uh, different wedding venues because uh, I used to work with big venues with very big, uh, you know, ballrooms of the hotels. Uh, but uh, this time uh, I had to find uh, uh, small venues, which I didn't used to work with such small venues, but this was a good idea uh, given by my team that they said, uh, uh, why don't we work with uh, some uh, luxury uh, small boutique hotels uh, in the different uh, parts of Turkey, especially for the destination weddings. And this was a very clever idea because we used to work uh, mostly in Istanbul and in Antalya for, for very big weddings in the uh, Turkey part. Uh, but we have uh, exclusively beautiful, uh, small luxury hotels by the Aegean Sea near Greece, uh, especially in Bodrum, in Alacatı, in Çeşme. These are very, very beautiful parts of Turkey. And also in uh, some parts of central Anatolia like Cappadocia. So this was a very a good opportunity for me to find out and to have the opportunity to work with different people I used to work with, different venues I used to work. And uh, I saw, uh, you know, uh, I saw that there are really very beautiful small boutique hotels and a couple of, you know, the couple uh, closes the hotel for three days and nights and if to each room, the family and the close friends, uh, uh, go into and you know uh, we uh, create a wedding uh, with three day uh, events like the welcome uh, parties and then the boat tours uh, you know it's like a, a beautiful and exclusive vacation uh, you, you are doing with your friends and the family uh, and uh, of course these uh, boutique hotels have very beautiful ambiences you know uh, I should say everybody should travel Turkey to just experience uh, these beautiful places and venues. I really, as a Turkish lady, didn't know such places and I learned, I'm so happy to have learned them. I'll be traveling there uh, for a week for the last September week uh, to close the summer, uh, last summer days. Uh, so uh, it was a big opportunity for me uh, to find out uh, those beautiful places. And, you know, I started to design uh, a, a, a kind of a design that is matching the ambience of these boutique hotels. For instance, in Cappadocia, I, I don't know if uh, have you ever been there. It's a magical place of Turkey in central Anatolia. We have cave hotels, you know. The hotels uh, are built from ancient caves. Uh, and it's a place that the Christianity was born, you know, it's one of the places. So th there are ancient cave churches, can you see? And uh, 
you know what we did for instance uh, we we did for, uh, th 30 people 40 people weddings there uh, with using these caves uh, for experimental uh, wine tasting uh, experiences during the wedding and used some of the cave uh, caves for the wedding menu so uh, you know we started to use our creativity in a different way so i started to uh, create uh, magical touches matching the ambience of that atmosphere because it's a different atmosphere again in the Aegean side I did a lot of Mediterranean style weddings under the olive trees with olives uh, you know uh, it was a different experience for me uh, you know I was vacationing while doing my business this time uh, and uh, it was a fun as well and the decoration doesn't change I say in the ballrooms but in the uh, in these parts of Tur uh, uh, the special parts of Turkey I had to think in another way you know uh, in another you know I had another mood I had to have another mood uh, so I enjoyed the, those kind of weddings as well because I'm vacationing with my couples uh, it's nice you know uh, it was nice to organize small tax weddings as well for me. Great, sounds amazing, Meltem. It's like when you mix business with pleasure, you're working, but you're on a holiday. That's a great experience right there. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> the same question is for you, Robert, that how was your personal experience with micro weddings if you have conducted any in the past year? Um. Uh, first of all, with the way of uh, speaking of my friend uh, Melton, uh, I, I've been many times in Turkey, but with uh, her way of speaking, I'm uh, like so excited to visit Turkey again and again and again. So, you should. Uh, so, <laughs> you so should we'll, call me when you will come. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll meet soon. Okay, for sure. Okay, uh, for the micro micro weddings. Uh, the only for us, the only thing that is, as we said before, the only thing that is different now is the number of uh, guests. Of course, uh, uh, like for us uh, as a floral designers, and uh, when we when we are born, we, we in this business we like to to always work, to always move, to always give life wherever we we are. So even if we have like micro wedding, uh, like in in Qatar, the instructions was like first of all like for uh, it was 20 guests then they added it after to 60 guests and then sometimes the government stopped the wedding completely it wasn't allowed then like like now it's allowed for 80 guests so but uh, in, in gcc most of the boardroom uh, like Mel melton said before uh, in turkey you have many big options to go with uh, smaller smaller venues or smaller and this is a very smart idea to to attain uh, like the same effect of a big wedding in a small area but the problem and you see most of the ballrooms uh, they are already prepared for huge wedding or big big spaces so even if you are trying to make it smaller it will be you will have high ceiling you will have uh, big walls you will have uh, huge spaces uh, so this is the way that that we did we added more tables we added more tables we divided our like we start usually with a floor plan so we divided our floor plan into lounges like in the front area with lounges and the back area was uh, tables so like that we have we we put many uh, furniture in all the space that we have and other so when you have more more uh, furniture more tables more lounges you have more things to decorate so like that we have uh, an area in the back side for dinner and the area in the front side for like sitting uh, uh, watching the bride uh, uh, very close into the dancing floor so like that with the furniture first step it's our our area is uh, is more uh, full with uh, with the furniture at least and when we have a nice floor plan, a clean one and the disciplined one, our decoration will look much better. So when we do, when we have this nice floor plan, we'll make better decoration. And uh, also, even if we have like micro micro wedding, uh, our client expectation is really very high. So we have a bigger challenge to give him more because uh, uh, before when we have like eight hundred or one thousand or even more guests. 
we are more safe because you have more number of tables. You can you can do more designs. You can like make each 10 or 15 table when one design, you'll have high centerpieces, low centerpieces. You are more safe because with the number of tables that you are decorating and the huge space that you are making. But when you have small spaces to decorate, it's really uh, not easy as for the big wedding. So uh, each you have uh, the focus of the guests or the clients is very high on each item you are putting, on each flower you are using. So this is for the centerpieces, and even for the walls and landscape and ceiling and entrances, it will be the same, maybe short, a little bit shorter, but when you, when you have to decorate the space, you have to, uh, to create the same spirit. So uh, in the end, what, what, it, uh, what you have, you will have the photo. And in our work, when we sell a concept or design, the client comes to you because of the nice photo or nice video you are taking. So this is, most, this is very important for us. Uh, this is the result that uh, stay for us. And also this is the reason that stay for the couple that they choose us to make their decoration. So always the expectation is very, very, uh, very high. So uh, for me, the micro wedding is more challenging than the big wedding. We have experience now in, in micro weddings. We have experience in the huge wedding. So uh, this is it for me. Very well said, Robert. I think that was so correct that with micro weddings, there is very less room for error because everything that you do is out on display and you can't really make a mistake. Mm -hmm. Right, right. I, I think that that kind of vision none of us really thought about. But 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 when you're in the, in the midst of it and you're actually doing it, you know it better. Thank you so much, both of you, for that lovely panel discussion. I think mm -hmm. after those questions, everybody's so well informed about what goes on behind the scenes. And like I said, that uh, anybody who has any questions for our speakers the floor is open you can write down your questions in the chat window and we've already got some questions so Melton and Robert are you ready to answer some audience questions yeah, yeah for sure yes. for sure I'm ready <laughs> Great. So uh, here's the first one which is for both of you uh, Akintayo Akino show is asking firstly thank you so much for the insights and he's asking that how do you deal with a client that felt you did not meet their expectations after hearing and understanding their brief? Melton, we would like you to answer that first. So can you repeat it again, please? <laughs> <laughs> okay, the question is how do you deal with a client that felt you did not meet their expectations after hearing and understanding their brief? Well, actually, uh... It happened, uh, it happened to me uh, some years ago, but it was not my fault I discovered. Because usually here, uh, first the couples visit you, okay? And they usually find you from uh, a friend's wedding they have been into. Uh, and they talk me about their dreams and uh, I'm always, uh, you know, uh, doing, uh, you know, showing, as I told before, uh, my presentation, understanding, and I, I get that. Then we signed the contract, and then uh, I, I promised them to make a, a live demonstration about table decoration, uh, and then that, that time, uh, that uh, couple, they ca uh, called their family, okay? because the family wants to see uh, the uh, table decors. Meanwhile, I'm designing for 3D as every designer does, but in 3D, it's not uh, easy to express the feeling of uh, the table decors. So they want to see the table decors. They came to my atelier and I have prepared three, four tables for them to see. And it was a big, it was going to be a big wedding. And the mother, of the groom she was so disappointed <laughs> because i realized that she nobody told her what color we will work what kind of flowers we will use what is you know she saw only the 3d designs but she had no idea about the flowers because the couple robert will understand me they liked modern you know style you know fl flowers but the uh, mother of the groom she was quite classic she was expecting big flowers flowing 
So I realized the problem in between the uh, family members. You see, uh, usually this uh, this uh, difficulty comes not because of us, because because everybody in this business is quite experienced about understanding people. That's why we are doing this business for years. But if the people themselves they don't understand each other. Uh, it bump, the bump is coming to ourselves, you know. Uh, 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 then what I did, uh, I tried to understand uh, the mother, what is her expectation, and I said, okay, I haven't heard about your expectation before. This is the expectation of the couple. But if, if you wish, uh, I can prepare some tables due to your taste, but matching the flowers of the couple, which was a very difficult for me. But, you know, I don't want to make any person upset in the fam family. And this was a problem between the uh, bride and the uh, mother of the groom, actually. Not, it, it was not a problem of me. But we are doing a family business. We are working for the families and we have to make everybody happy. So I invited them. For the second time uh, to my atelier, which I do not do this, uh, but you know, I saw, I realized that the problem will be growing, you know, uh, and it will it will make me very stressful during that that wedding process. So I I wanted to solve the problem before the wedding day. So I also talked with the bride and I told her, trust me, I'll do something matching your taste. But we have to make her happy because she's the mother. So when I invited her for the second time, um, she was very pleased with my kind attitude. You know, I always believe in kindness. You know, Pro sometimes being so professional and being very rigid about every detail. And you, when you have very borders, you know, uh, this doesn't make everybody happy. First, this doesn't make you happy, you know. Sometimes you have to break some borders and you have to say yes to some, you know, needs. So uh, she was very pleased uh, that I was doing, uh, I was inviting her for the second time and she was satisfied uh, with the, you know, uh, with the flowers I showed her. Uh, okay, these tables, you know, there were maybe 50 tables, but I made her happy uh, with four or five tables. Uh, you know, nobody saw those tables <laughs> among all the other tables. So mm -hmm. I always say kindness always works all through our lives. We should be kind. The customer should be kind to us as well. And we should be kind to them. And, you know, I thought to be how to be kind to most of root customers, because this is also sometimes we come, we face in our business, you know, as they pay us, they think that uh, they can have us. Uh, but with kindness, with a kind attitude, but a, with a very clever kind attitude, I should <laughs> line this, underline this. Uh, they learn uh, to respect your work. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, we have to understand each part of the, uh, each uh, member of the family. But I also, now, this was a very big uh, experience for me. I ask every all of my couples, who will come to the demonstration, bring it uh, in the first meeting, because uh, I don't want to, you know, change everything in after the third or fourth meeting. So this was a big experience for me. I usually, you know, solve the problem with kindness. That's all. Well, that's the best way to go about it, Meltem, always with kindness. I think that's such an interesting anecdote and an interesting uh, experience of yours. Uh, I would like to uh, ask the same question to Robert as well. Just like Melton said that, you know, with, with wedding planners, especially anybody in the wedding business, you have to be a people pleaser because there's so many people in the family that you have to please that it's just... It's difficult. So, Robert, any kind of personal experience that you've had where a sort of brief was given and the client was not happy and how did you deal with it? Uh, I think Melton is very kind. <laughs> She's so sweet <laughs> with the way of... <laughs> She's very sweet. She's very kind. <laughs> you know, uh, for me, it was, uh, it was our experience, really. Uh, since in the beginning, yes, we faced uh, many problems like like this to and we learned from from it 
that's why uh, with our experience, uh, I start always with the meeting with the client. Usually I do the wedding for the bride and the groom mainly. Then the parents, not the way I explain always, especially to the, uh, to the couples that this is their wedding, not the, fam not the parents' wedding. Uh, if they want, like, uh, uh, if the mother, as Malcolm said, the mother of the groom want, want something else, I try to explain in a gentle way that this is not, not uh, her wedding, it's, uh, it's uh, the couple wedding, they are trying to enjoy, and you should be happy with what, what they are asking for. If you need different, different thing, uh, or different uh, design, or different style, you can make two two events. You can make uh, like pre-wedding party if you want, the the way uh, the mother or the parents want, and the the couple should should have and should be very satisfied with uh, with the result of what they choose. And that's why when we when we sit with the couples, we listen very well. I listen very well to them. I do the meeting with the couple, so I try to understand uh, every concern for them. Uh, like our work is like being a doctor, it's almost the same. You are, uh, the doctor, when you go, a patient go to the doctor, he lis uh, the doctor listen to the patient, he tell them, uh, I have headache, I have, I don't know why. And he, he give them the medicine uh, about what, what he heard from the, what the, the patient is feeling. So the same, the, the couple, when they came, they come to us, they explain to us what they love, what they don't like. I try to show them a lot of photos, a lot of our work. And I, I hear the comments, some like, they like this, they don't like this. So with, this, uh, with our ex experience, I can get a, a good conclusion of what they want. And then uh, the contract, the contract in our work is very important. So I make clear contract on, with every details and the sample. So when we do the sample, uh, and I, I don't like to show them uh, when we do a sample for the couple. I don't like to show them for all the all the family or like if you have three hundred guests, you cannot share all the details with three hundred guests or even with the close family because every one of them has different taste. So you can in the end you cannot satisfy uh, like all the family. We try our best to satisfy because you know in our work there is two ways to get to get new wedding. It's from the word of mouth marketing. When everybody tell, and uh, in the in the in the wedding, the guests tell each other or tell someone uh, about our work, or with social media. So so we try to satisfy as much as we can uh, uh, our our guests. So we start with the contract, with then uh, the sample. We take photos. We let the client sign uh, on the on each detail and everything we do for them. We take photos. We let them sign to have the. This is we learn after many, many mistakes uh, uh, in the beginning, like from 16 or 17 years when we started. Of course, we did some mistakes. We, we didn't have the right experience how to, uh, how to manage with uh, the big wedding because we didn't start directly with the huge wedding and the royal families. Uh, and even when you work with royal families, it's completely different. Like you are working with the government. You are working with a country. It's not you are working only. So you have like... Uh, uh, many, many uh, opinion, many, uh, many, uh, each one has different, different taste. Each one wants to be, uh, uh, to give better ideas. And we listen. So the so most uh, advice is to, to be a good listener, to understand everything and step by step, contract, samples, photos, signing and everything. And uh, we will be, we'll be safe. Great. Thank you so much, Robert, for that approach. I think a step-by-step -step approach always works. Thank you so much. Okay, the next question is pretty simple, and I think it's a very important question because every wedding has different sorts of people. So although it's a basic question, but very important. So how do you protect your decorations from getting stolen or any kind of loss or theft? How do you prevent that? Meltem, you first. I see Robert <laughs> smiling there because he you knows cannot. it's an important question. <laughs> Sorry, well, Melton, go uh, ahead. The, 
Well, actually, uh, it's uh, very hard and it's very difficult because now there is the social media and we're putting our work, uh, each detail. Uh, we're using the social media. I'm, I'm an Instagrammer, actually, and I'm putting all my work uh, to Instagram uh, to, sh to show what I'm doing. And people, many people, although I, I, I'm quite experienced, I'm very well known in my country, still many young people, uh, they come and find me uh, from Instagram as well. So uh, I use it. I have to put my uh, detailed work there. Uh, this is my idea, of course. Uh, for instance, when I was talking with Sarah Haywood uh, in a live uh, show, she said, I, 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 I totally disagree about this, she told me. But me, that's not like this, because it's impossible to protect your work, you know. Uh, but of course, when I design, uh, uh, I'm always, uh, uh, you know, protect uh, protecting them uh, with the laws. But after, once I put it to Instagram, it's impossible to protect it because you cannot follow all the world. You know, you cannot follow Africa. You cannot follow uh, Middle East. You cannot follow Russia. You know, who is doing your work? You can. So it's good that you're giving inspiration if they are copying you. Uh, but it's for me, it's impossible uh, to prevent this. Sometimes they are using even my pictures in the Instagram. Uh, so some of my lawyers or my friends are calling me when they discover this out. So my lawyer calls them, in, uh, warns them. That's all we can do. So then take away, they even use my own pictures, my own photos. Can you imagine? They are daring this. It's an unbelievable world now. So, uh, you know, I can only prevent uh, my own pictures, but I cannot prevent my work, uh, unfortunately. In this century, it's impossible. That's true. Maybe you can just take it as a compliment that somebody's stealing your work. But yes, you're not happy about it at the end of the day. But what can you do? I would like uh, Robert's viewpoint on the same question. Robert, how do you protect your creations and your decorations from being stolen? Uh, uh, during, during the years, uh, as I told before, as I said before, the, the best way to like promote your work or to show uh, your work to uh, more uh, number of uh, people is through social media. And when you post uh, uh, your work on social media, on Instagram or Facebook or any any uh, social media platform, so you are you are uh, giving it, uh, it's a matter of respect. Uh, for me, when I see someone is putting, uh, using our pictures or using our, our photos, I uh, for me, I feel happy because uh, <laughs> like, like you are better than them. So... Uh, they are they are getting inspired by you so it's something nice but the only inconvenient thing that is uh, with our work you can get a wedding or an event uh, from a picture from a photo so you can understand you can you can from a photo not every not all the people all over the world can uh, can know that this is your work or this is taken from uh, from your instagram or your uh, website or something so they can get work from it so uh, if, if uh, it's not ethic or it's not uh, with respect to steal uh, any other work, in the end, it will be only a copy. So it will be, it will be only a copy. Uh, uh, like sometimes our inspiration, we get inspiration from a, an hotel lobby, from, a, I don't know, a landscape. Uh, a view. Uh, you, you have to get inspired and not copy. So this is what I also re really give advice for everyone. Uh, use the picture, use the photos, get inspired from it, try to make something better. So it will be uh, better for all our industry or, uh, or our work. It will be better. Well, that's a lovely way to look at it, Robert, that you should just get inspired and not really copy. Thank you so much, both of you, Meltem and Robert, for that lovely discussion. I hope you two also had a great time, just like me and the rest of the viewers did. Thank you. It was lovely being here. Thank you, Pavlin. <laughs> thank you so much, Melton. Thank you. And, uh, thank you so much. Thank uh, you, Robert. It was, really, it was really great yes, time. Yes, Robert. It was really great time. Thank you. Thank you so much.
for being here. It was lovely to have you both. And I hope everybody enjoyed the panel discussion as much as we did while discussing it. Please do stick around for the rest of the event. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.